six of them home, and that's quite well, a threat for us. Well, he's, he's a little bit far up. I think so. Yeah. The 10 cents a mile they couldn't afford it, wherever it is. Yeah. Um, can I get in the middle of this? You can be one of the seven. Yeah. <laughs> you can <gotta laughs> take his place. <laughs> Exceptionally distinguished performance of duty and outstanding contributions to the Department of Defense from January 21, 1981 to November 4, 1985 as the Director, White House, Military Office, and Director of Special Support Services. Mr. Ickes' foresight, perception, and breadth of knowledge have ensured the smooth and efficient operation of the Military Office. The programs he developed to ensure presidential command and control of the armed forces in a national emergency are unprecedented, unprecedented in scope and have added immeasurably to the security of the United States. He worked tirelessly with numerous national security officials in assessing the terrorist threat and ensuring action was taken to enhance the safety of the president at home and abroad. He energetically supported and had a major role in the programs developed to ensure the continuity of the presidency and the government of the United States in every foreseeable contingency. Mr. Hickey's sense of loyalty to the president and to the nation and to the members under his personal operational command served as an inspiration to all. His leadership resulted in an unparalleled record of effective military support to the president. He has earned widespread respect throughout the Department of Defense and throughout the government of the United States. I take great pleasure in presenting Edward V. Hickey, Jr., the Department of Defense Medal for Distinguished Public Service. Signed, Casper Weinberger, Secretary of Defense. Simpson, and I'd like to say in a bipartisan way that that was the best thing that President Johnson ever did. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, since that time, Ed, as you know, and as we all know here, is uh, one of the oldest and most faithful members of the Reagan team. And so it's a pleasure for me to swear him in for the new duties today. Raise your right hand. I, Edward B. Hickey, Jr. I, Edward B. Hickey, Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution. That I will support and defend the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. sons, he left one of them on duty when the Marines protected his <laughs> Mr. Secretary, Mr. Attorney General, above all, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, <clears throat> today is a, a very moving day for me because it marks really not the end, but in some respects, the end of a journey. It was the greatest privilege of my life, namely after nearly 18 years, when I walked in the shadow of this magnificent president. It's been every state of the 50 states of the United States many, many times in the only 30 foreign countries watching, observing, disadmiring this president. But the greatest legacy that the president has given to me is the status of the world and the status of the United States. As I look down the room, that I know that my seven sons have a magnificent future because of our great president. I'm grateful to you, sir. Thank you so much. Extremely generous words. I meant them, sir. Well, I know you did. But, uh, even if there is a touch of money there in the. Take <laughs> 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 uh, It was a wonderful time. It was back during a great tragedy that had occurred at the national scene that it had been decided in Washington that a number of us as governors should have Secret Service protection, and that was my first introduction and experience with them. And I'm going to tell just one story. You know, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> yes, I think it would be beneath the dignity of the occasion to say that when you all came and moved in on us in Sacramento, and we were all delighted to see you, that we named two of you Boston Blackie One and Boston Blackie Now, <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell you something about this service. It was out at our ranch then go down from Sacramento for the weekend and and I go out to the ranch and I like to I always like to shoot a little so we'd go down in the woods and set up some tin cans and they like to keep their hand in and we'd blast away. And then one day I read an article about shooting from the hip. And they said, Oh yes, they had to do that too. And uh, one of them set up a can and so I went into a crouch and <laughs> missed the can. <laughs> and then one of them stepped up and started blazing away again. I said, wait a minute, you didn't top it. You didn't slouch or crouch. And uh, they kind of pedal pushed. And, uh, and I said, well, isn't, is the article wrong? The article said that you, you crouch. And uh, finally, he's pedal pushing. And he said, well, we lose our rating if, if we <laughs> crouch. <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean? And then I heard this line, and I fell in love. The unit chief that particular day spoke up to save the other one from embarrassment and said, Governor, if we're ever shooting at anyone, we're between him and his target. <laughs> Meaning, they would stand up straight and be a bigger target. And as I say, 
It's been a love affair this way, so all this time. <laughs> 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 Thank you.